Welcome to the first. You have a story. If you look back on your life, you've done things for the first time that no one in your family, in your town, in the country has done. This is Dr. Sandy. You have unknowingly paved the way for others without knowing it or even acknowledging it. This is where you tell your story so that those who come after you can walk in your footsteps to build their own firsts. Hey everybody, welcome Karina Cantus. Karina is a prolific author of 14 titles, including the gritty MC thriller series Outlaw and the exciting YA fantasy duology Illusional Reality. Her podcast, Behind the Pen, is a YouTube show and audio podcast where she chats with artists from around the world about how they got started, their future plans, their journey, their books, songs, films, and poetry. Today, Karina takes a turn discussing how she got started in the publishing business as an author. After publishing her first book, she decided to learn as much as she can about the business before becoming a publisher and a virtual assistant to other struggling authors. We also discussed the myth that writing a book makes most authors wealthy and runs through what she can do for her own business to make it better. Welcome, Karina. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Today, I'm speaking to Karina Cantus. And Karina is a ton of stuff that I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> She's an author uh, of many books, which I, I've been an author too, but she's done way more. And she let us know her genre. And she also does podcasting. She has a company that helps other authors with books. Well, I'm going to let you tell us about it. Welcome, Karina. Thank you for having me, Sandy. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and please just tell everyone about what you do and uh, how you do it. Okay, well, um, I run Author Assist, which helps authors everything from brainstorming an idea straight through to publication. And then when they have the book in their hand and they say, what now? That's when I help them and show them what to do next. Um, I was in the same position 28 years ago. And so everything I've learned over those years, I've wanted to give back to authors that uh, deserve to have their book out. Um, have either been uh, ripped off by Vanity Press, um, have no idea what they're doing with marketing, even though they're with a small press, they're not got help there, it's all up to them. Uh, and so that's where I'm here to answer questions, to help them and to teach them as well, because what I want to do with Author Assist, I don't want them to keep on hiring me or hiring other VAs or PAs. I want them to learn how to do it themselves. So when their next book comes out, they can do it and they're competent and they're confident about doing it themselves. So I will do one-on-one -on -one sessions with them and um, that would take about an hour, two hours. And if they still haven't got it, then I'll go back with them on Zoom and we'll go through it again until they get it. Because in my heart, I want them to be able to do it themselves. Um, there are authors out there that do nothing but write and have no time at all for promoting their books and that's when i come in as a full-time va and i promote themselves and their books around social media and uh and uh podcasts and set them up on podcasts and uh, websites radio shows um oh, yeah. there's is a there, whole list yes is there a different is there a particular kind of book that you do do you specialize in one genre or you do no, i take everyone and anyone even though I, I normally work with uh, fiction authors, but uh, I have worked with non-fiction authors. Um, but because I'm a fiction author myself, uh, I know where I need to go to get those books noticed, to make sure that people know the branding of the author. And, and so um, I have no problem working with um, businesses. 
uh, publishing houses. I've worked with big publishing houses before. Um, I do outsource work and in-source work comes into me. Uh, and so, yeah, I do a bit of everything. I've got a list of about 20 different services that I can offer authors. Um, I didn't even know there were 20 services. <laughs> do, you want me, do you want me to just read them through? Yes, yes. Please. All right. I've got them. I've got them ready. Okay, so I am a full time VA or part time VA, which is a virtual assistant. I'm also a marketing and promotion manager, and I'm also a social media consultant. On top of that, I have uh, my podcast behind the pen, which is also a YouTube show. I do event and party hosting. I do branding, uh, author branding and logo designs, graphic designs. I do narrations. I do blurb writing, which uh, is the uh, pain to all authors' existence, blurbs. Um, I do uh, voiceovers. I do ACX uh, book setups. I do e book cover designs. I do book trailers. I'm actually a multi award winning filmmaker with my book trailers. Uh, I do Amazon rankings and make sure I can get my client, my author, up to the number one spot in the Amazon charts. I do book but ads. I manage and create uh, newsletters. I make sure that uh, their book is on many of the websites. Uh, I have a radio show, Author Assist. Um, I do bookmarks. I do teasers and banners designs. I do brainstorming sessions and mentoring and book coaching. <laughs> I am I am terrified of being an author after I hear that. Oh, you don't need to know that. It's just it's like a pick and mix. It's like a candy shop. They can come. They say, I want one of those. I'll have one of those, and I have one of those. <laughs> okay, because I don't remember doing, I never did it for myself for the first book, but we did do quite a bit of those things, but I didn't have to do it myself. Uh, it sounds very scary when you said, you know, you're teaching them to do it themselves because that's quite a bit, but it also will save them a lot of money. Exactly, exactly. This is the whole reason I started Author Assist wasn't just to uh, do the service for them, it was to teach them how to do it themselves. Yeah, I, I could understand that. I'm My business partner and I are writing our second book. Our Congratulations. Said, we have been writing this book and we only just got started. <laughs> We've been saying it for the longest time and we've procrastinated and now we finally just got started on it. So I totally understand all the ins and outs. I love collaboration. I did my first collaboration with another author on it was we wanted to do a dystopian story. Uh, so we got on Zoom and we brainstormed for two hours. And when we finished, we had the plot, the characters names, the start, the middle, the end. The book was written. Oh then goodness. we took a scene each and a chapter each. We wrote it. She gave it back to me. I gave her mine and we looked over them and we agreed, disagreed, changed things to make it flow. And we worked like that. And then when we finished the book and we got it uh, published, we thought we've just made a most amazing world that we can't leave it with one book. So we decided to do another one that took one hour brainstorming for the book to be written. And after that, we knew it was going to be a trilogy. And we haven't started the third book because we were given a contract by a, a small press for six books. Now, oh the reason there's six books, here's, here's the kicker. The reason there's six books is because we're doing, it's a trilogy, but we're doing exactly the same story, except hers is nice and mine is naughty. So it gives, it gives a reader the opportunity and the chance to, if they want something a bit more risque or if they want something a bit more tame. So the publisher, the small press has taken on uh, six books, a trilogy of naughty and nice, giving the reader the opportunity to decide which version they want. Now, how naughty is naughty? Is it uh, shades of grey naughty? Oh, or... no, worse. 
<laughs> no, there's no, there's no uh, BDSM. It's just um, uh, erotica. It's erotica. But the book is, it's a dystopian sci-fi, then erotica. It's not like erotica takes over the book. The story is about characters. The story is about the world building. It's just that uh, I leave my door open and she closes hers. Oh, oh, interesting. And they're the same characters. So if I were to buy the nice one, I would just get the nice version without the erotica. And, exactly. Ah, I've not seen that before. It hasn't been done before. <laughs> the first, Karina. Definitely. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting. I'll, I'll make sure I, I publicize it for you because that's brand new. I haven't done that. Yep. So what do you enjoy about your job, about what you do now, the writing and the world building and the teaching other people? They're, they're two separate things for me. Um, I work five days a week, 10 hours a day as author assist. And then I have the weekends to promote my own books, to edit ones I'm working on, to work on ones that I'm writing. Um, so they're totally separate from each other. And what I love about giving back everything that I've learned to authors that need it um, is the feedback I get back after knowing that I've helped them, knowing that they've appreciated, knowing that they've listened to me and they've t taken all of my suggestions and they've run with it and it's worked for them. And the feedback that I've given, that I've got back and the testimonials, I actually had one of the best, probably one of the best reviews <laughs> I've ever had. Uh, a possible client that I had a Zoom meeting with said to me, um, I want to speak with those people that put those testimonials on because I think they're too good to be true. <laughs> How can you get better than that for a review of your work? I mean, I said, yeah, I'll get you in touch with anybody on there, you know, because they are legitimate. Oh, I want those. <laughs> I want those. But so what are some of the things that you don't enjoy about your work? Uh, of being and especially being the first to have you know all these different things going on and what do you not like about it uh, what I, ne I, I never stop um i suffer from chronic insomnia so i'm lucky to sleep two three hours a night which is good because in greece I should be sleeping when my clients who are in America are up and working. So as I don't sleep, it's perfect to have a conversation with them and to, to message on Facebook and to, to have a Zoom meeting if we needed one, you know. So um, that's, that's really good. Of course, it's not good that I don't sleep, but it's worked out well in, its, in itself. You've got to turn a, any negative, you've got to turn into a positive. You've got to. There's no. There's no other way of allowing something to to bring you down. Um, You're the first I person wished... I've met that had the same problem that I had with not sleeping. With sleeping only like three hours. You have insomnia as well, yeah. I don't call it insomnia because that's all I've ever known. I've always been this way, and I don't know if it's insomnia or just my body clock. Yeah, I think it's um, with me. I have, I have serious health conditions. I take a lot of medication, and insomnia is one of the symptoms of one of the illnesses. So, uh, but I think now because it's like ten years, I think my body's so used to it now that there's no way I'm gonna be able to get a seven hours sleep. It, yeah. I don't remember the last time I had seven hours sleep. You know, I can actually go up to seventy four hours before I crash. And then when I crash, I go maybe four or five hours straight because I'm just zombified after 74 hours. Right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, you were telling me some of the some of the negatives before and before I interrupted you with my sleep story. <laughs> I think the, the worst thing for me is is working so hard to get the client's books out there and to um, 
to for people to know who the client is because it's always you sell yourself before you sell your book you're not going to sell books if people don't know who you are what you do are you capable of writing why should i put my hand in my pocket and buy your book if i know nothing about you and if i you know you could be one of those that decided to write a book put it on kindle and you have no um expertise you you haven't got it uh, professionally edited i'm just going to buy a really bad book um so you sell i have to sell my client first before i can start promoting their books and the thing is i don't guarantee sales and i say that to every new client that i speak with but it upsets me when i know that even though i'm publicizing them and i'm getting their name out there and people are recognizing who they are they're recognizing the covers the branding everything when i know that not getting sales it makes me feel like i failed even though that's not my job right. to get sales you yeah. know so that that's really disappointing um well most but, people uh, marry marketing with sales they think yeah. of them together if i market there if i market well therefore i should get sales it doesn't out. work like that exactly it doesn't work marketing is is about uh, again ready to do the actual promotion you have to get your marketing strategy and marketing plan all set before you can start with promoting your book yes definitely uh, and sales is what most people want because they <laughs> want to either make the new york times bestseller list or you know make money from being we, we all have those high expectations when we're a debut author oh we're going to get a um contract we're going to uh, get new york times bestseller we're going to be amazon bestseller um, sadly um it gets deflated very quickly as an independent author it's very difficult without an agent uh, backing you to um to have a name for yourself, to get uh, very large monthly royalty checks. Um, basically, most independent authors are, are not uh, living being authors. They have another job, but oh. they write not because um, they want to make lots of money, they want to be famous. They write because they have to write. And, and that's it. the author you need to read. Yeah. They are the people you need to buy the books from yes that is so true i think a lot of people writing is their therapy most definitely i'm the same with my books i've had so much um stuff that's happened to me in my past that i've put in my books and it's given me some point of closure to it um and it's very therapeutic there's always a piece of karina in my work I don't know where it is, but there's always a piece of me because when I'm when I'm writing, I have to put myself in that character's shoes. I have to experience everything they're experiencing, the emotions and the thoughts. They're all mine. I'm going through that. And if I do my job right, when you pick up one of my books and you open the first page, you're jumping into that character's shoes. You're experiencing everything they've experienced. I've not read one of your books, but I have, <laughs> I have all of them on Amazon. I brought them all up. Where would you suggest that I start? If I'm reading your books. I, uh, what genre do you enjoy? Because I write in every genre. Like you, I don't think I have one particular that I love more than the other. I've read, you know, since I was young, I've read romance stories, but I can say uh, I love it better than a mystery, a good you know, mystery. I just really like books for what they are. And if it's a romance, it's a good romance. If it's a a mystery i like not to know what's going to happen until the end and i purposely don't turn right I, I i tell you what you need then you need this one this is called heads and tails and it's a collection of flash fiction and short fiction and flash fiction if you've never heard of it is one page story there it is one page story that's a whole story see i see karina you just taught me something 
because I have been writing <laughs> one page short stories through the Gotham write-in. We have a write-in and they give, and I've been writing like one or maybe two pages. I don't think it goes to two pages. Yeah, there's another one there, one and a half. It's called a flash fiction and it has to have a start, middle and end. It can't just be uh, a piece out of a novel that right. doesn't work right and and so this is a collection of all different genres but they've all got amazing twists in them you'll be like oh, to the oh, end of the story and you'll be like whoa so yes this is what i recommend for you to read uh, oh. if anyone wants something a bit more risque a bit more raw i i do so many real to life um outlaw um mafia um, but I am, I'm not sugarcoating anything, so they're very dark romance. Um, and I've just released my first two, which went uh, best-selling straight away. It's amazing what people want to read. It, I, I tell them it's very explicit. In, in, it's graphic in violence. It's, split, it's explicit sexually because I'm writing about mafia and I'm not, like I said, I'm not sugarcoating that. I'm telling it how it is and what happens down in that basement, you know? And and they know what they're going to get, but they love it. Five stars down the board. They I'm love it. If, it. if it's a fantasy or yeah. are they living, you know, they're reading about something they would never do, maybe. There we go. There's, there's the fantasy. These are clean fantasy paranormal romance you have um the first book illusional reality and then the second book the quest it's a duology and it's a duology within a duology because they if you look at the covers yes it's two two different people right. in the same person right so that if you love fantasy uh, the world building being totally taken out of your reality into a whole new world with adventures and monsters and a beautiful romance then check out the uh, illusional reality it's also book one is also out on audiobook as well if you like audiobook you can get this one on audio i like the feel of turning the page I'm still you like <laughs> yeah <laughs> sit on a train or sit someplace with a good book and just go through it listening to it don't do the same thing for me just like i like listening to it while i've got the book in my hand and <laughs> i love doing that listening to it and it's coming alive while i'm reading it off the page okay, okay. <laughs> i've not tried i've not tried that but no, definitely. So what do you think your impact will be on the next generation, Karina? The next set of authors, the next set of people who want to do podcasts and do the things that you do. I, I do so much, um, we'll call it bono work, free work um, on panels and um, teaching teachables on um, on shows of how to do something uh speaking like i am with you um you know the the problems that uh, authors have when they first publish and they don't know what to do next um and so i do i mean i've got like four this a week i've been doing four this week so i'm always giving back as well as uh, i do my services i'm also giving back out there to people that want to listen and want to learn um with no charge and I do not charge a lot either because I know how much it costs to, uh, I know how much it costs inside to write, but I know much how much it costs to publish and market your books. So you, my prices are think, so low. What do you think it costs to publish a book? Like from the time you write it to the time you get it published? What, what, what do you think on average uh, a fan okay. book, let's say? okay so um you've done your book you've done your first draft now it's an editor you're talking 300 400 dollars for an editor that's going to do go through two drafts with you and the line editor maybe you need a beta reader you're talking maybe a hundred dollars for a good beta reader they're the ones that read the manuscript before it goes out there to be published arc readers they don't uh, they read free of charge because they just want to read a book and they're the ones that might 
find those little tiny plot holes, uh, little tiny mistakes that the editor missed, that you missed after reading it a thousand times. So the ARC reader gets to read it before it's published. Um, you have to hire a professional formatter that does the front matter and the back matter of the book and make sure the pages have numbers, make sure the font is all beautiful and any illustrations that need to go in the chapter headings, they sort all that out. They sort all the live links out for the ebooks. Um, you're talking maybe 250 for that. Um, and then you've got the cover. Now you can get a cover from Fiverr. Uh, not for five dollars so you'd pay 15 20 dollars um for a cover then they're, they're pretty good over there yeah. um if you want to go with uh the lady who did this one and my fantasy ones she also did this one um she cost about um uh, 280 for the ebook and the paperback and the paperback has to be the full flap um, so yeah, you're talking, doing it yourself as an independent author before it's even published, you're talking about a thousand, at least a thousand dollars. And if you haven't got that money, don't publish your book. Don't ask your neighbor to edit it. Don't, 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 uh, get, uh, try and do your own cover on Canva. Um, it's your book. It's your baby. You need to give it the, the best opportunity it has to succeed once it's published and to do that it needs to be polished the three the three things cover editor formatter yes i you know like i said i did my book so long ago i don't remember what the cost was but there are a lot of people like fiverr that you can use and get really good quality things you can them. most that definitely a lot of money and so mm -hmm. that that cost has come down a little bit just by sheer volume of people who are doing mm -hmm. it now. There are some, um, the ways you can get published now is an independent author like we've been talking about. There's a, a hybrid press which basically you bring something to the table, they bring something to the table which half the cost and you've got a publisher behind you. And that is getting really popular now. And then, unfortunately, you still have the Vanity Press, which um, a client of mine, I had to get him out of the contract because when I saw the state of his book, they had not edited it. They'd not even read it. The pictures, he's a beautiful illustrator, and the pictures weren't even on the paperback book correctly. Um, I got him out of the contract without him having to pay a penny more. I got the book uh, rewritten. I got the book formatted. I got the book published again. And he had it in his hand the other day. And he sent me this most beautiful, beautiful thank you message. And I did that pro bono. I didn't charge him anything because I knew that he didn't have the money and he deserved to have that book out. He had such a talent that he needed to get that book out. And they ripped him off. And I just felt so bad for him that I've come across that too many times. I just, I can't say no, Sandy. I'm just, I can't. If I have the time and I have the knowledge and I can help them, you know, don't, don't take advantage of me because I know, I will know if you're trying to take advantage yeah. of me, but those that really need it, those that need that help, then then they're going to get it from me. No, that is so good. And it's a very, Christian thing to do. It's, it's a <laughs> very, uh, it's something you do from your heart mm -hmm. and because you love it and because you really truly want to help. And exactly. I like that too. I do a lot of free podcasts, I do a lot of free speaking because I want to share information and I want to. Yeah to have that information. So I totally sympathize. We're kindred spirits, Sandy. So we don't sleep and we're exactly professional exactly professional. We, we, we're, we're we're assisting people that need it. That's our path in life. It took a long time for me to find it. Um, it took me being uh, seriously ill to to get there. Um, I feel so blessed with what I have even though I have that other side of my life, I still feel so blessed with the family I have, with yeah. uh, what I do for people. I know that that's what I was 
put here to do is to help people at i i swear i i just came to that realization myself oh wonderful about purpose i've been doing a lot of work on what is my purpose and i used to say you know i i help a lot of people but i didn't really love helping a lot of people i just felt like it was put upon me to help mm. people. and i i decided i wasn't going to do that for a long time i was going to make money and still even while i was making money you're still that helping allowed people me, but the money allowed me to give away a lot of my free time to do the help. And so finally, I'm not wrestling with it anymore. This is what I'm here to do. I'm here to help other people to do things. It doesn't it feel liberating? Doesn't it feel wonderful when you when that just clicks that you yeah. you're where you should be? I and I'm there. I'm there. So thank you. So is there anyone who inspired you, Karina, to either get into this business or to do what you do now? No, um, uh, there was what's it all started off with uh, narrations, which you can see here, narrations by KK. I was reading excerpts from my books on video, and this was before digital media exploded. And people were watching them, other authors were listening to them and said, can you do one for my book? And so author assist started off with two services it started off with the narrations and with the book trailers again i did my own book trailers people were asking me to do their book trailers and that's how it all started and it wow. just grew from 2015 that started and now we're 222 and i've done it all on my own i've had hundreds of clients I have full-time clients for the last seven, se one's been with me nearly nine years, another one's been with me seven years, um, and I have others coming in needing, um, you know, needing a branding or logo, another one coming in needing a book trailer. Uh, so I have that work going on as well as my full-time VA work as well. Um, so yeah, I never stop. I multitask, I never stop, but it's because I never stop that I don't have to think about the other part of my life. Yes. It, you know, I can just forget about all that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So do you think because you've done all of these for the first time, does it make it easier when you have a new thing to do that you, do you worry about how am I going to do that? Or you just say, I've done so many new things before, I can just take that on. Yeah, I I will I will say to a client if they ask me to do something and I don't think I don't mind saying I'm sorry I don't think I can do this, um, but I've been doing it for 28 years and I don't think there's nothing I can <laughs> not do and and if there is then I know somebody who can do it like I'm not an editor so right. you need an editor I'll put you onto an editor nice. you need someone to to do your formatting I know people that do that you know but anything else come to me i, I know it all <laughs> well you know i i've personally gotten bolder in doing things so when something new comes to me i don't say oh my god how am i going to do that i just try to figure out like what is the process that i need to go through i'm a very process driven person so what is the process for that? What do I already know that I can use in this new process? And like you, if I come against something, who do I know that can help? Exactly. Me? So I don't you know, really sweat about it. It's, it's all experience. And if you're learning, I mean, I, I go to webinars, I keep up with all the marketing that's going on because it changes all the time. And there's VAs and PAs there that do their work. They post uh, on social media for their client and been done, finish, and they carry on doing that for the next 10 years. I won't do that for my client. I want my client to be up to date with the latest trends, what's working in the marketplace, what we need to look out for in the next few months. I keep up with that through webinars and watching and listening. Um, so I'm learning. I'm still learning as I'm going, you know, 28 years of it. I'm still learning. Um, 
2015, I started Authorassist with two services, now 20 plus. Um, I put two new ones on uh, this year. Maybe I'll find something else that I know I'm, I can do and add that onto the list for next year. It, it works like that. Do you have a team and do you have VAs no. with you? No, it is all me. And I tell you what, Sandy, with my 14 books, I don't have time to promote myself. So I have hired PAs and VAs that charge more than what I charge <laughs> and nobody has come through for me. Oh and goodness. that makes me so sad because people as authors are scared to hire people if they're not going to get what's promised to them. Right. And I can say, look, read my testimonials. I'll get you in touch with my clients. I'm legit. If I'm saying I'm going to do it, I'll do it. And if I can't do it, I'll admit it. But I'm not going to take your money and not give you what I've promised you. But that's coming from my mouth. Of course, every author, uh, PA or VA is going to tell you that. And I, I got burned so many times that I stopped hiring them. Oh, my and that's goodness. bad for me, yes. you know? Yeah. How do people trust me when they, they've been, I, I mean, look, some clients I've had, they've hired PAs before, and I've had to not beg them, I've had to change their mindset to the problems they had before they're not going to have with me. Trust me. It's all about trust. I have to trust them. They have to trust me. Uh, and if, if after a Zoom meeting we haven't got that connection, then I won't work with them. Right. Oh my goodness. I, I have to think about hiring you, Karina. <laughs> you can afford me. I'm so cheap. But that's another thing. People have a go at me because I don't put my prices up. You're worth more than this. You should be charging more. No, I won't. I can't do it. No, I can't. <laughs> You know, whatever makes you comfortable and if it works for you, that's all I can say. So what's next? What's next for you? Well, I've got that um, three book uh, contract. So we're slowly working through the edits on that. Um, I have um, the next book of the Dark Romance. Um, I'm working on that now. So I'm working on two books at the same time. Um, Broken Chains has actually just been released, translated in Greek. That's my first book that's been translated in Greek. So I'm so excited. Oh, that wow. came out the other day. Um, I, oh gosh, what else am I doing? My, my show's fine. It's gone five years now, the radio show. Um, the podcast is, YouTube show is on its two and a half years. The podcast, audio podcast is on its one year. Um, I'm just going to keep on going, Sandy. Where do, we, uh, where do we find your radio show? Uh, it's called on the Artist First Radio Network and it's an uh, author assist radio show. And uh you'll have a link to a page called Linktree and every single one of my links on social media, my books, my um, business, my website, everything will be on that one page. Got it. So it's all under Karina Cantus on Linktree. You can find that. I exactly. I to find you. So yep. that they can come for work over to you. Yeah, um, I'm all over social media. Uh, anyone wants to find me, uh, you can find me as author assist or just um, come onto Facebook, look for Karina Gantus. That's my spelling, my name just there. And um, message me if you're an author and you need help, whether you're a debut author, whether you're an established author and your sales are just stopped, then you need me to get that rolling again. And that's what I do. Do you help people relaunch an old book? That I have done. I had um, one of my clients uh, been with me nearly six months now. Um, she had a series that just was not moving. And I had to be honest with her and tell her the reason. Now, some people don't want to hear it, but she listened. And I said, your covers are not selling your books. That was it. Your covers are not selling your books. And they were really, really bad. And so um, I designed them. Uh, we got uh, a website up and running for her because she never had one. That's something That was something new that I'd never done before. So that's on my list now of being able to design the websites. Um, 
and uh, we got the uh, books going again and we got the website going and blogging and uh, it's all moving again ah because i have an, a book that was done it's a business book in 2010 29 or 20 mm -hmm. and it's still very relevant like the advice in the book is still very relevant so i'm going to talk to my business partner about relaunching it while we write this new book yeah most definitely i mean there's three things that stops a book selling just and, and when when it's a book or a series just stop selling you know there's something wrong now it's either the price or it's the blurb or it's the cover and more than likely it's the cover it's got to be eye-catching People need to look at that cover. Uh, on Twitter, it goes down so fast, the feed, right. that your book has got to stand out. They've yeah. got to stop on that post two seconds to get eye yeah. contact with your book cover. Okay. And your book cover has to, t has to tell whether it's fiction or nonfiction. It has to tell what the reader's going to get from the book cover. So having a book cover with two different colors, a title, and uh, the author doesn't do it anymore. Got it. Got it. Not I've that I've seen. It. I haven't seen your books. So I haven't seen your covers. So I'm just going by what I, oh, you've got one. Go on and I'll give you my honest opinion if you're sure. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Right. It's my okay. partner and I. It's very old fashioned. Okay. It's very old fashioned. Um, having you on the verbiage. Yeah that's a lot of a lot of back um yeah i wouldn't have uh, you two on the front i would use an actual image a very colorful image that's relevant to what you're talking about uh, what's the title of the book it's called the black and white strike gold it was really about how we grew our business to the million dollar mark and obviously one black and one white and then we struck gold Okay. Um, honestly, I would get rid of the title as well. Come up with another title. Okay. Um, uh, how? When was that first published? I think twenty ten. Hmm. It was around twenty ten. That. Yeah. Was I wouldn't promote. I wouldn't uh, promote the race now, because because you you like you're separating each other when you're actually together. So I wouldn't um, put that straight out on the title about the race. Okay. Okay. Your partners, your your uh, sisters, you've been working together for so long. Um, so you need to come up with another title for the book and uh, definitely another cover. Um, the, the colors are very dull, but the two of you back to back, it's, it's very outdated now. And I think uh, a new cover, a new title, maybe take another look at the blurb because it's a lot to read at the back yeah. um, and then relaunch it and see what happens. Ah, see, I got free help. <laughs> if you listen to me or not, that's entirely up to you. But when someone asks my opinion, I'm known around the uh, writing community for being honest. If you ask my opinion, I'll give it to you straight with it. You want to hear it or not, you know, but it's just one person's opinion. So you can, you know, take it or leave it and, and find out what other people think about the cover. Please show, show people, say, tell me honestly what you think about this cover. What do you think the book's about? What do you think you're going to get if you read this book? And get other people's opinions on it. But it's outdated, Sandy, outdated, definitely. Outdated, outdated. Peg, we are outdated. No, thank you. Thank you for that. The other thing that so I've gotten several comments on is this book would read really well in another language, in Spanish or, you know, French, because it's really about how we grew our business. And a lot of people, once they read it, it's like, of oh, course. Great. And I've had Spanish people said, I would love to give someone I know this book, but they don't speak English, you know, or read English very well. And we've not. I've just them. translated 
my first book after 27 years of publishing and all it is is the same as an audio book you share your royalties with the translator you pay nothing up front i don't i hardly pay for anything in anything i do i find the cheapest or the free things of everything you know and and so uh i'm not with acx i got uh, i have a publishing contract with uh, the uh, fantasy books and so it was the publisher that did the audio book through someone else um but acx you can get an audio book done even with a non-fiction and what happens is it's a split a royalty split so any money that comes in is split between you and the narrator. Now, the same with the translator. I'll give you the address where you need to go. Uh, it's free to, to set it all up. And you choose uh, what language you want. Then you have a look through all the uh, reviews of all the uh, translators they have for that language. And you contact them. And you've already given all the details about your book and everything. You contact them, see if they're uh, interested. They'll come back to you. You don't go back to them. They'll come back to you if they're interested in in translating the book. You have uh, ten uh, first ten percent of the book done, and you get to look at it and get someone to check it and make sure it's not Google Translate, right. and uh, make sure it's all legit. And then when you're okay and you agree with that, then they carry on with the rest of the translation. Um, once you get the translation done, then you, it's up to you to get your cover with the uh, translated title and uh, names in that language. And once that's all put together with the translated blurb, which the translator will do, then you get lovely emails from them that I've been getting the last three days saying, your book is published here, your book is published here. It's wonderful. And again, any sales, it'll be 50-50 split between me and the translator. So if you had, let's say, um, how many people can you do a share with? Because each time the book sells, if it's translated, it's split with the translator. If you have an an illustrator, would you do a share? No, with that as well? no, no. The only thing you share with your book as an independent author is uh, the audio book, or you can pay for a narrator if you've got the money. Pay for a narrator finished with, they don't get a penny. Or you don't want to have pay for it and you don't have the money like most indie authors don't it's a 50 50 split narrator or translator you have it done in spanish german french that's three different uh, languages 50 50 on each of those translations with that translator how interesting well you've taught us a lot today <laughs> just sharing your own story karina i can say i learned quite a bit I'm glad. I'm glad. Don't, that, that's why I do what I do. Don't be surprised if I reach out to you. And <laughs> once people see this podcast, if they reach out to you as well. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Any questions you have, uh, I'll send you a service sheet anyway. But any questions you have, you know where to find me. And I'll send you the links to the uh, translator and uh, the uh, ACX uh, for the uh, audio book. Sure. So everyone, we've been speaking to Karina Cantus of Behind the Pen and Author Assist. And we will make sure that you get her information so that you too can become an author and Karina can help you get your book out there. So thank you, Karina. Thank you for having me, Sandy. Bye everyone. This is Dr. Sandy. Thank you so much for sharing your journey on the first, where no two stories are alike, even if the circumstances are similar. Let this discussion serve as inspiration for others to show what's possible, and more importantly, to produce seconds and thirds.